guess it is pretty green. To me, it's not. It wasn't just always all green. Now I'm quite green. My name is Elizabeth Sweetheart, and I am the Green Lady. Everything is green. I brought green counter, and then I got green knobs, and then all the accessories. We even painted the front door green. <laughs> if I find something that I really like in terms of clothing and what I wear, I make it green. These are my overalls. I grew up with my family in Nova Scotia and they didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> I wanted to be an artist. I started wearing green when my dad invited me to visit Florida. It was really exciting for me to go because we hadn't really connected and he didn't really care for an artist. <laughs> The water is aqua green, deep, rich greens. I painted all the palm trees, and from that point on, I started adding little bits of green because it was like a lucky day that Dad asked me to go visit. It's been around 17 to 20 years. I continue to wear green because the way I dress makes other people smile and say, Oh, the green lady! <laughs> Can I have a selfie with you? <laughs> I think people really, really like the belief that you like something enough to really carry it through. When you're young, you tend to think you look good in black. As you get older, you realize color is so much fun. I will continue to be green because it's so positive. I think when it's not, then I'll change to my next favorite thing. New York's a tough city to live in. Uh, it always has been. Wait, see, you hear them? The old saying, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. But I think because the birds have made it here. I mean, they've endured this far. My name is Steve Baldwin, and I've been tracking the wild parrots of Brooklyn for about 10 years now. Those two look sort of frisky. It's not really their mating season, but Myopsidomonacus. The monk parakeet, native to Argentina. And as far as we know, something happened at Kennedy Airport in 1967 or 1968. It appears that a crate full of parrots arrived from Argentina. Something went wrong. A bunch of them escaped. They came to Brooklyn College right here. We've got an incredible cast of parrots here today. One, two, three, four. They're smaller than a, than a pigeon, but larger than a sparrow. And they're the only kind of parrots that build these freestanding structures. These nests can get up to the size of small cars. It's methodical work. It's twig after twig after twig. Parrots are, are sort of the primates of the bird world. They're smart, they're communicative. They eat almost anything that's available to them. So they're, they're perfectly set up really to thrive in a place like Brooklyn. Uh, even though it's not where they came from, they've adapted extremely well. You have to, I think, have a certain fiber of steel to, to make it in this town, and I think the parrots have those qualities. This is what a typical bodega sounds like. But this bodega sounds a little different.
Almost every street corner in New York City has a small store with sandwiches, groceries, and drinks. This is a bodega. Soy Giovanni Valdez. Eh, one second, un segundo. Cut. Okay. Yo nací en República Dominicana. Yo iba a las estaciones de radio y yo decía esto, eh, me gusta esto, yo quiero hacer esto. Me mudé a Nueva York en el 99. Bueno, empecé la radio aquí hace cuatro años. No hay ninguna bodega que yo conozca que tenga radio como yo. Aquí en la bodega. Yo soy Giovanni Valdés. Ya automáticamente entro a la radio, es DJ Yoba. Esto es Relambío FM. DJ Yoba en cabina, el DJ más Relambío. Relambío es una palabra que, ¿cómo se dice? Flirt, eh, coquetear. coquetear, coqueto. Entonces de ahí sacamos el nombre de Relambío FM porque me decían Relambío y cambié el nombre. <risa> buenas tardes, mi gente. Buenas tardes. Mi show representa a la comunidad latina aquí en, en Brooklyn, East New York. Tenemos alcance más o menos de 40.000 a 60.000 personas. Trato de complacerlo a todito un poco con, la, con su música. Una es música urbana. Una es música romántica. Merengue. Bachata. Eh, poca música clásica. Entonces yo decidí todo traerlo a una sola radio. Relambí FM estamos eh, más enfocados no solamente en música, es un top show involucrado con la comunidad. East New York eh, mucho tiempo atrás era un área muy mala. Yo dije ok, vamos y invitamos a la gente de, que escucha la radio a las reuniones comunitarias y tratar de arreglar los problemas que tenemos aquí en Queremos recordarle que cualquier, cualquier inquietud que usted tenga es muy importante que usted asista a las reuniones. Gracias a la gente del Precinto 75 y en comunidad, eh, o sea, en, en conjunto, con nosotros estamos haciendo un buen trabajo. Es bastante la, el apoyo que estamos teniendo en la comunidad después de la radio. Walking down this quiet street in Brooklyn, you'd never know that inside this building, within this tiny apartment, music is made. Meet Evan and Luke. They're longtime friends and roommates. Evan and I have been living together here for, how many years have we been living together, man? About a year and a half. A year and a half. And once a month, in only about 500 square feet, they managed to pile in up to 60 musicians for the ultimate recording session. So I think we can should put five or six people in the bathroom. For each arrangement, we record it in about three hours and uh, post it online. A lot of people's reactions are that it seems crazy, and it is crazy. To pull this off, first, they have to uproot their humble abode. Anything that is not involved in making music has to go. We take all the furniture out, we take most of the doors off. It's just all about making as much room and as much sight lines as possible. It really just looks like chaos. There's mic stands everywhere. The floor is littered with music stands. I'm a little worried about this, though. There's not a single inch to spare. And that's because they make way for the strings, woodwinds, horns, percussion, and a full chorus. Yeah, that's a marimba in the kitchen. But why? I wanted an opportunity to record a bunch of people at the same time. Luke wanted an opportunity to hear his arrangements played. And so we just invited a bunch of people over. And although it seems unconventional, there's a reason for the madness. We're trying to change the way that you might see an orchestra play. There is a special dynamic and, and a feeling in the room that you won't get in a recording studio or in a public venue. It's this unique sound and sense of community that has attracted musicians from all over the country to participate. There's definitely something really exciting about the idea that this shouldn't really be possible. It's a really unique experience, and I think that people are drawn to that. And so they keep at it. It'll find me, find me. It's a real uh, kind of jarring, wonderful experience every time, and we love it. And I bet the neighbors must love it too. They're lucky they're good.
you get your hair done, you can't be touched. You're just, you're on point for at least 48 hours. The queer community needs a safe space to get haircuts and that's part of the reason why I'm here. My name is Des Marshall. I'm a barber. I work in Brooklyn, New York. The barbershop I work at is called The Gamesman. It's kind of an institution here in downtown Brooklyn. The owner, Frank, has been here for over 50 years. The clientele has been a lot of men who work in, in the neighborhood. It's a lot of lawyers, a lot of judges, other types of businessmen. I kind of throw a wrench into all of that. I mix it up a little bit. My clientele is mostly queer, trans, gender non-conforming, folks of color, non-folks of color. For the most part, my clientele is the LGBTQ community. I think with barbershops, it's difficult as a woman to walk in. It can sometimes just feel like a boys club. It's nice to feel like you can let your hair down <laughs> or cut it off. I think I'm building a bridge in different ways. Can you be at 5? 3.30, I got you. For queer folks, for trans folks, for gender non-conforming folks, hair is very important. You keep it really crisp or crisp. more rounded? Got you. But you need a barber that you feel comfortable to talk to about how you want to look, what's that vision that you have, someone who can execute it, but also do it in a way that they're not going to be judging you throughout the whole process. See how it's kind of growing out like that? Do you I want to keep, keep it, it up? Got gotcha. you. I get to spend my day with other queer folks in a space that you know, 20 years ago, we probably couldn't have even walk, walked into. You know, I'm part of that story now. My clients are a part of that story now. We're, we're part of the history of this place. We're part of its legacy, and that's, it's really cool. <laughs>